if you're going to take care of folks, like what about our veterans, Lauren? Uh, you know, because you're talking about lots of cuts and how to pay for things. I think if you're going to be America first, uh, you can't put veterans last. So I, I do just want to point to your vote that uh, you voted against care for veterans exposed to cancer causing toxins and bird pits during war. So we definitely have different priorities because I believe we should take care of our veterans always. You just watched a snippet from the debate between Lauren Boebert and her Democratic opponent, Trisha Calvarez. And as you saw, Trisha was knocking Boebert for voting against the PACT Act, which expanded health care benefits to veterans who were exposed to Agent Orange and toxic burn pits. And if you'll recall, Republicans actually blocked that bill. That is until Jon Stewart literally decided to go to the Capitol and shame them in large enough numbers to get them to actually pass it. But Boebert was one of the Republicans that still voted against it in the end, which is despicable, but it makes sense since you can't really shame a shameless person. But she's going to try to explain why she still opposed expanding basic health care to veterans. And I kid you not, her excuse is TLDR. That's what she says. But then things get even worse for her because her opponent decides to clap back and it was brutal. Are you done? All right. Uh, so when it comes to our veterans, I have absolutely put them first. In my first year, we were in the minority and unfortunately not all the legislation was great. And the omnibus bills have put in something really beautiful for our veterans. But again, not voting for something and we have 22 hours to read, that's over 2,000 pages long. When, when that bill first came up, I was in the minority and amendments were closed on the House floor. I could not give a Colorado voice to the men and women who have served in our military on that legislation. Because that was not last the legislation. What about cuts to the VA? You propose significant cuts to the VA that would hurt veterans, caregivers, their families. It would hurt homeless vets. It would hurt telehealth for vets. Don't sit here and tell us that you voted against one bill that you were somehow for veterans. Oh, no, thank you. Damn. I'm not familiar with Trisha, but you can tell that she came prepared and she's very effective in this debate if you watch more. Now, this is a horrible look for Boebert, obviously. You can't claim to care about veterans if you're against doing the bare minimum for them. Our government sent them to wars and risked their lives. The least that they should expect when they come home is basic health care. But Boebert can't even be bothered to do that. But yet she wants you to think that she's patriotic and... Uh, she supports the troops, really, because you just kind of voted to doom them to death. That's kind of a big deal. But to be fair, this isn't just a Lauren Boebert problem. It's a Republican Party problem. They're against VA health care because to them, any form of government funded health care is bad. So they defund it and they try to make it as ineffective as possible. So that way they can tell everybody how bad government run health care is after they've just sabotaged it. And Lauren Boebert, she used this exact same playbook during the debate. How about you go and actually speak to a veteran and ask them how difficult it is to get the care when the VA has $40 billion a year in their annual budget and see how difficult it is. And unfortunately, we have Democrats that we are fighting on a regular basis who want universal uh, health care, who want a single payer system. We'll ask the federal government how good or excuse me, ask the veteran how good the federal government is at taking care of their health needs. They get in the way more than anything, and we need to bring choice back to our veterans so they can go to the doctor of their choice, the clinic, the hospital of their choice, and receive the care that they need without being on waiting lists, without the red tape, without even having to call their member of Congress to cut through all of that just to be seen. That's it. That's that great. That's that great. And there were all things that Representative Bobert benefited from when she had her own medical emergency. Right? You gotta telehealth the doctor, you gotta go into a hospital. I don't have time. On a road that worked, why shouldn't our veterans have the same? That was a great rebuttal from Trisha, but I will say never miss an opportunity to attack your opponent if they attack universal health care or Medicare for all. I don't know if Trisha supports this. I don't know what her position is, and she probably didn't respond further because she was running out of time. But that always presents you with a slam dunk attack.
Because if somebody says, I'm against healthcare that's free at the point of service, you can then turn around and say, oh, so you think that somebody who doesn't have insurance or who does have insurance, but they're out of network when they experience a medical emergency deserves to have medical debt? You would doom normal working class Americans to that fate, all to line the pockets of your donors in the health insurance industry, really? Shame on you. You know, a pre-pandemic study found that 68,000 Americans died every single year due to a lack of health care. And the number was probably higher because they didn't take into account people that had health care, but it was bad health care. So, you know, she could then say, well, what do you say to the families who have lost loved ones due to for-profit private insurance that you're trying to expand? You want to take VA health care and privatize it. You want to take Medicare and privatize it further. That's what you want to do. And that's what she means by choice, to be clear. She didn't say it, but Republicans use code words when they're talking about health care. But privatization isn't choice. It's the illusion of choice. And listen, I won't tell you that VA benefits you know, are perfect. VA health care has a lot of flaws. But the thing is that VA health care is still very effective. It saved my dad's life multiple times. So the fact that so many Republicans try to play politics with our health care is outrageous. So I'm glad to see Bobert get called out for that. But let me just say, we live in the richest country on the planet. Health care should be free at the point of service to everyone. We shouldn't even have to have this conversation. So, you know, squabbling about additional benefits for veterans to me is egregious. Yes, they should have health care, as should everybody. But the fact that Republicans won't do the bare minimum and make incremental changes to our already broken system for people that they purport to support, it really speaks to their just lack of humanity. But until both parties get off the teat of private insurance companies, I just don't see universal health care that's free at the point of service happening anytime soon. But there is another clip that I want to show you where Trisha clobbers her a little bit more. And uh, yeah, this was satisfying to watch. So I want to tell you a story, Representative Bober. My dad was diagnosed with terminal kidney cancer and I got four extra years of life with him thanks to life extending medication that his union retiree benefits covered. You voted to keep the medicine high and out of reach for millions of seniors that gave me four extra years of life with my father. That was a clear vote. You voted against it. That's very clever because these are indefensible votes that Boebert took. And if Trisha keeps hammering Boebert for this, I think it's possible that she ekes out a victory. Now, possibly doesn't necessarily mean likely. I don't want to get your hopes up because this is a district that leans Republican fairly heavily. But after redistricting, the makeup of this district did change. And on top of that, limited polling data does indicate that Trisha does have a small chance if she campaigns well. So in late June, Newsweek reported last month, an internal poll conducted on behalf of the Calvary's campaign by Keating Research found that Boebert had a 10 point lead over Calvary's. However, the Democrat took the lead by nine points when the same respondents were told concerns about Boebert and positive for Calvary's. This indicates that effective campaigning can work. Additionally, internal polling conducted on behalf of the McCorkle campaign by Gravis Marketing showed that the Democratic now former candidate had a 14 point lead over Boebert as of late last month, which would be May when this was written. Now, to be honest, I don't really know what recent polling data looks like because we just don't get enough polling from these House races. But, you know, I don't necessarily think it's unreasonable to speculate that Trisha's chances maybe went up a little bit because Biden has dropped out. And assuming that he was dragging down the ticket here as he was, you know, across the country, maybe she got a little bit of a boost from Harrison Walls. But overall, I think that this race is going to be closer than expected. And after seeing Trisha's performance in the debate, I'm inclined to believe that she does have a shot. But again, I don't want to give you too much hopium because this is a very difficult race to win. It's an uphill battle for the Democrat. Nonetheless, I think that Trisha seems like she knows what she's doing. So I feel more confident after seeing them interact. The problem here is that not a lot of people are going to see Trisha go up against Boebert because this debate was not a normal debate. So in a press statement from Trisha's campaign, she says the debate took place at a country club, had an entry fee, and was not televised per Boebert's demands, mind you. And the only reason why we're getting clips now is because Trisha decided to take the time to post them on Twitter, and she later uploaded the full 50-minute long debate to her YouTube channel, which I'll link to down below if you want to watch the full thing. But because Boebert is trying to 
not, I guess, ruffle any feathers, not debate publicly because it would likely be embarrassing. Well, it's hard to say if Trisha's effective campaigning will even make a difference because these debates are being hidden. You know, so we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, this is a race that I will be watching because I'm crossing my fingers again that Bobert will be defeated. It would be the most hilarious thing ever if she was defeated and kicked out of Congress after switching districts. Don't know if that's going to happen, but, you know, if it's in the cards for the universe, you know, give us this victory. We could we could really use it. Vagina. <laughs> 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 <laughs>